task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. Good night and good luck. Hey, folks, it's Rick. This week's elephant in the room are Putin's American simps. <laughs> folks, this week I saw one of the most disgusting displays I've seen in American politics in a long time. At a Trump rally this week, Donald Trump, notoriously one of Vladimir Putin's most eager and, and cheap little um, global whores, stood there and attacked Vladimir Zelensky and attacked Ukraine and attacked American aid to Ukraine and attacked NATO. Biden and Kamala got us into this war in Ukraine and now they can't get us out. They can't get us out. I watched him. We will win. We will. He's been saying that for three years. While praising Vladimir Putin. In that audience, when Vladimir Putin's name was mentioned, there's applause. And in that audience, when Vladimir Zelensky and Ukraine were mentioned, there were boos. Every time Zelensky comes to the United States, he walks away with $100 billion. I think he's the greatest salesman on earth. But we're stuck in that war unless I'm president. I'll get it done. I'll get it negotiated. I'll get out. We got to get out. When American aid to Ukraine was mentioned, there were boos. When the fight against Putin was mentioned, there were boos. What was the Republican Party once had a very proud element. And I was proud as a young man to play a tiny part in the end of the Cold War. And that end of the Cold War was something the world could be proud of. It broke the back of a repressive regime that controlled a third of Europe. And it broke the back of the idea that a national police state should or could manage and modify the behavior of lives and, the, and to eliminate and control the freedoms of millions and millions and millions of people. When the Soviet Union collapsed, the wall came down in Germany and the Soviet Union collapsed, we hoped for something better. Putin was not something better in the end. There's a lot of ambition that he would be better. There was a hope that Russia would find that, that emergent capitalism was something it could embrace. It didn't happen that way. Okay, The end of history didn't happen. And so now we have to be honest and real about who Putin is and what he represents and what it means now to be on his side. Donald Trump, the Republican Party, and Mike Johnson, and many, many other people in the Republican Party, particularly in the House, but he has some allies in the Senate, are now pro-Putin. They are now in favor of Vladimir Putin. They will not tell you if you ask them, who would you like to see win this war? Because they have an answer. They want it to be Vladimir Putin. Now, this is a sickness inside the Republican Party. It came down from the top with Trump because he was always compromised by the Russians, whether it was financially or mentally or morally or whatever the case, the actions he took as president, sharing intelligence with the Soviet ambassador, kissing Vladimir Putin's ass at any opportunity, praising a man even today who has been involved for two straight years in daily attacks and the murder of Ukrainian civilians. The invasion itself is bad enough. That should be disqualifying enough. But the fact that Putin's war strategy is to kill Ukrainian civilians with attacks on schools, attacks on hospitals, attacks on nursing homes, attacks on the power grid, these are things that disqualify anyone who supports him from any office. If you believe that Vladimir Putin is a good guy or a Western Christian, you're fooling yourself. You're being played. He is a third world dictator with a first class propaganda machine. You see that machine playing out all over the place. You see it playing out on Fox, Newsmax, OAN, Donald Trump. You see it playing out online. Truth Social and X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, have become absolute hotbeds of quote unquote Americans who uh, take the party line right out of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Russia. And it strikes me as something that really would offend Republicans of even 
10 years ago. The thought you would bow down to a grubby, greasy little KGB agent who has stolen billions and billions of dollars from his people, who's left Russia in a worse condition than when he found it, who has now engaged in a war that has cost the lives of over 600,000 of his fellow citizens and over a million Ukrainians is repulsive. And yet, they love him. They've bought into the myth. They've bought into the lie. They've bought into the bullshit. Vladimir Putin's not a Christian. Vladimir Putin's not a conservative. Vladimir Putin's not a family guy. Vladimir Putin is a dark, evil figure in our history. He's a technocratic version of his antecedents. He's a technocratic version of the, of, of the worst ideas from 1984. There's no free speech in Russia. There's no free association in Russia. There's no free market in Russia. It is a kleptocracy from top to bottom. And yet, you understand why Trump finds this so appealing. The idea that he can control people, use the power of the state to crush his enemies, use the power of, of his position as, as the head of government to make money. And Putin, by the way, has made, as I said, many, many, many hundreds of billions of dollars by being at the top of a gigantic corrupt kleptocracy. No Republican should be proud to back this, but they are. They are. More and more, they are. More and more, they're unwilling to say that they think Vladimir Putin is a source of evil in the world, and he demonstrably is. More and more, they're unwilling to say they want Ukraine to be victorious. Now, there are a few. I'm going to give, and I knew y'all may find this offensive, but Mitch McConnell has held the line in the Senate on on this matter, which I'm shocked by. And yet it's a, it's a sign though of how faded the, the anti-authoritarian coalition has become that you've got a guy who's on his way out being one of the last standouts, one of the last holdouts. You know, you've seen some other Republicans, you know, Mitt Romney and Susan Collins, who normally I don't have a lot of truck with because I don't think they've taken the most consistently brave stand against Donald Trump. But here we are. But the majority of Republicans now in fact, especially in the House, led by Mike Johnson, do not want Ukraine to win this war. They do not want Vladimir Putin to lose. They want to do what Trump wants. Trump wants Putin to win. Trump wants tanks in Kiev. Trump wants Zelensky killed. Now, why does he want Zelensky killed? He wants Zelensky killed not because of the moment that we're in with the war, he wants Zelensky killed because five years ago, Zelensky would not do Trump's bidding by producing a false doc dossier on Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and Burisma. It was always a lie. And Lev Parnas is fan the fantastic new series from Russia with Lev uh, on MSNBC. Watch it. You'll see where this corruption and anger comes from. He wants Zelensky to lose because Zelensky wouldn't help him beat Joe Biden. That's how shallow and shitty and dark and dangerous this is. That's how unbelievably corrupt this whole thing is. If you are a Republican right now and you say you believe in a strong foreign policy in this country, you must absolutely be against Vladimir Putin. He is part of a coalition that includes Iran, your big enemy, right? You're big. You all freak out about Iran every day. And China. Again, the CCP. Oh, my God, the CCP. And North Korea. If this isn't an axis of evil, it's at least an axis of assholes. And these people are forces in the world that are unilaterally and universally, rather, opposed to American influence in the universe. They don't want us in Europe. They don't want us in Asia. They want us to do what Trump wants, which is to hide behind tariffs and isolationism and weakness and capitulation to evil. Russia does not deserve to be a regional power. They are corrupt. They are dangerous. They want NATO to fail. They want to be able to take NATO without firing a shot. Donald Trump wants that too. China wants the U.S. castrated in the Pacific. And if I may quote the great Les Grossman from Tropic Thunder, 
The Pacific is our area too. This is a guy in Trump who is a weak person on foreign policy and national defense. And he's embraced evil in the form of Putin. The Republican Party is following him down that path. And if you follow him down that path, we will see millions more dead. We will see millions dead in Ukraine. We will see millions dead in Poland. We will see the Baltics fall back into the grip of the old Soviet empire. Because that's what Putin's trying to reassemble, is the Soviet Union. Why on earth would anyone of good faith and good conscience in the Republican Party who claims that they believe in a strong national defense and American interests abroad, why would you cede power to evil? Why would you hand Putin a victory in Ukraine? You do it because you're following Donald Trump's lead. You do it because Trump told you to do it. It's repulsive. It is a real question mark here about the future of of foreign policy in this country that the Republicans have ceded the ground. Kamala Harris will be a stronger international leader to protect the interests of America than Donald Trump. That is an indisputable fact. That is an undeniable fact. Trump's bullshit that, oh, we're in the war in Ukraine, I negotiated on day one. It's a lie. It's like any one of a thousand transparent lies that Trump has told over and over and over again to an audience of rubes and suckers and mooks and skells and morons and mouth breeders. These people, mouth breeders, mouth breeders, breeders, it could be either. Um, these people believe this bullshit. I think that people are just ridiculous that they think that Putin's such this enemy. He isn't doing anything. He just wants back what was his. But he invaded. He, he invaded. What was his? He, he invaded support. Ukraine, That's fine. killing thousands of people. That's fine. That's fine with me. Because they're not smart enough to understand the consequences. I don't think Putin's a problem. I think Zelensky's the problem. Why do you think Putin's not the problem? He's the I, one that invaded I, Ukraine because, and has killed thousands of people. Because Putin. Uh, is trying to save his country from the likes of idiots like Zelensky and the elitists. If you believe there's a good outcome by letting Donald Trump hand over the keys to Europe to Vladimir Putin and Iran and China and North Korea, because that's what you're doing. There's an axis out there. And that axis of these countries Again, call it an axis of evil or an axis of assholes. I don't care. But they are an axis now. They are opposed to freedom. They are opposed to democratic systems. They are opposed to free speech. They are opposed to religious liberty. Iran being the, 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 the one area of this coalition that wants a particular religious form of autocracy. But they are certainly willing to be a part of this alliance to weaken America. And if you're part of this alliance to weaken America, you'll do whatever you can. They're providing with Russia with thousands and thousands of drones being used to target civilians. And yet somehow the ever so so robust, oh, we hate Iran, Republicans now, they don't say a word about that. The Chinese are providing billions of dollars of aid to Russia in the form of weapons and armament. They're also buying Russia's gas and oil which Europe has weaned itself off of now, especially due to the sanctions. North Korea selling Russia millions of dollars a day of artillery shells and artillery pieces and vehicles, uh, also providing combat forces apparently into Ukraine. So if you're a Republican who claims you're for a strong national defense, and if you claim that China and Iran and North Korea are our enemies— and they're providing Russia with the wherewithal to wage a war in Ukraine. How are you not a part of that? How is Trump not a part of that? Because Trump is a part of that. This is on Donald Trump's head. This is what he's doing. This is the f- number one factor why foreign policy conservatives in this country or anyone who cares about America has to look at this election and say, we're not on Putin's side. We're not with this. We're not going to to, to be a part of this. And yet the audience at Trump's rallies applauds it over and over. The Republican Party in elected positions applauds it over and over. The MAGA media infrastructure 
from Fox News down to Putin's cheerleaders who are paid for by the Russian RT network, the Russian propaganda network, um, Benny Johnson and Tim Poole and Lawrence Southern and Dave Rubin, all those people and Jack Posobiec and all these other people who are Putin cheerleaders in this country. You know what those first four didn't do? They didn't give the money back that Putin paid them. They didn't give the $10 million that Putin paid them back. They kept it. And you know what? They're still to this minute shoveling out pro-Russian, anti-Ukraine, anti-NATO, anti-American propaganda to help Trump and Putin. So the enemy in the room this week, folks, the elephant in the room is the enemy in the room. The elephant in the room this week are these Putin sympathizers. You should look at them as what they are, traitors to America and people who should never be within a thousand miles of an elected office, most particularly the presidency ever again.